Good to luck, everybody. We're really blessed tonight. We have the multi-talented. We have Yossi Green in the house. And we have the amazing singer, Yumi Lowy. Hope you enjoy. This is going to be a long one. It's going to be a nice fun bringing. Um, I'm taking requests and comments on YouTube, on Instagram, on WhatsApp. There's a major group. Um, so everybody on COL, on Gruntig, Bus is Nice, Matsu.com, we're starting. Here we go. Let's see, what do you have in store? Well, we got to start somewhere. So why don't we start with Yedid Nefesh? There's a couple of them. Let's, let's do one and let's see where we, where we go. Yeah, did nefesh, you did nefesh, oh, rachamon. We show you how the coel red so in echo. Yeah, did nefesh, you did nefesh, oh, rachamon. We need him for the high part.
to the next one. These two songs were written very, you know, very close together. I had two, two. You did not, you didn't, you did a nefesh. I had, I was working with Avramel at the time in Matcha. When I say Matcha, by the way, it's MBD. I don't know. Very many people don't know. It's yeah, by us, he's always Matcha. Matcha and Avramel. Matcha and Avramel, exactly. Yes, like, like in, in, like, I think he's known as Avram Fried and MBD. You know, I don't know. To me, that's like, uh, you know, Avramel, Avramel. Anyway, so at that time. So um, I was fortunate to be able to write two Yidid Nefesh. As a matter of fact, we won in 1992, um, which I know you guys, you Chabatskers, know the exact dates, the years in, in, in Tavshin. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good at that. I don't know why that is. I, I always, always feel like... <laughs> no, because, because whenever you speak to, you speak to Lubavitcher, he knows... They know, because, you know, there's a lot of siches uh, and a lot of things that were written in certain years, and, and uh, you connect to those years. Anyway, the reason why I know it's 1992 because I have a photo of the concert, and in those days, the cameras used to have uh, the date... Chaim Mazel, otherwise we would never know when these things took place. Anyway, so in 1992, we did at our first big show in Israel, Matcha Avramel and myself, and the beauty of it was that uh, I remember I was sitting, was it, we had a wide piano bench, and I was sitting in the middle and I was playing Yedid Nefesh, and Matcha came, sat on my right side, and Avramel came and sat on my left side, and we did both Yedid Nefesh together. And it How was, were you able to play? It was very, it was, it, it, I just, I was squ squeezed in between them, but it was a nice feeling, you know, at that time, because... Uh, Anyway, I was telling you before I got here that um, I was learning, you know, Rabbi Lamelech Biderman puts out a uh, puts out a chaver every every week of all I kinds of out, you print it out. So I print it out also, and it's beautiful. And if you have time, I go through it. And uh, he brings a story of Rabbi Nachman Mendel Futterfas that that he heard. What he was uh, one of the big Hasidim, the old the old Hasidim of the Balatani, the right? The Hasidim. No, he was a Hasidim. This. When? Generation. Just You're kidding. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so there we go. The Rebbe Sachasid. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, thanks for straightening me out on that. Sure, sure. I just committed like... See, that's uh, why it's uh, important to know the COL, years. COL Live knows that I didn't yes. know exactly when that was. Well, it doesn't matter. This, it's, it's that's okay. the way. It needs some humility. Anyway. It was a chassid as if, you know... From, from, from Fatah. Yeah. Anyway, he said that the, the, he heard a story that uh, in the long time ago, this is an old story, um, there was a, uh, a Yid that was sent to Siberia. No, he was sent to, uh, and they sent him away suddenly. And in those days, you couldn't, uh, when, they, when they came, they told you, you have to go. You, you grabbed whatever you could, and uh, you never knew when you'd come back. When you'd, right. Anyway, so they, put, they sent the Yid out, and he was there alone. And, and, uh, and also, there was, was in, in, in Siberia, there are times in the year when um, the, the sun doesn't shine for months. So you don't even know when it's Shabbos, when it's Yantav. You only, you only know through by keeping time that he had, he had, they had a watch. Anyway, and he said that he was, he was very miserable there, obviously. And one day, he's in, it's in, it was in the middle of the day, but it looked like night. And he hears, he hears singing. Now, because it's also very cold and there's not a lot of people, so, you know, the sound, sound travels. travels. And he begins to walk in the direction of the, uh, of, of, of the singing. And he gets and he sees a little hovel in the middle of nowhere and he walks in and he sees an old Yid there who's singing Yidid Nefesh with his eyes closed. Some, I don't know what song it was but it was a song on the words Yidid Nefesh and he was singing with his eyes and he, didn't, he had no idea that he had a visitor. You know? And um, finally he finishes the song and he opens up his eyes and he sees the Yid, the yid over there and he says to him where, you know, where, how, how long are you here? The seed asks, he says, well, I'm here for 20 years already. So this, this seed is for 20 years. And he says to him, look, do you, do you perhaps, do you have film? Do you have any, because I don't, because when they took me, they just sent me here and, and I had nothing. So the first question, he says, without asking anything, just, do you, he says, well, I'll tell you, I was able to grab a film Shalyad on the way. But that's all I have. I have a film Shalyad. So he says, if you, would you wait with me? Because I'd like to... I'd like to be able to wait after Shabbos, and, and uh, he walked back, and he brought the film, and his seed put on the film, and he made this, uh, and his, uh, he made this big this bracha, and he is neshama left the, this world with after he put on this this film. Mm -hmm. So 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 Rav Mendel Futterfas, what how does it relate to you today? If it says, imagine if Chalil Vachas, one of us, would be put away for twenty years, would we still be singing Yedid Nefesh after twenty years in Siberia? 
the way the seed was singing it in Nefesh after 20 years. Anyway, so to me that was very touching. Yes,
compliment. Thank you. you. That wasn't easy, the high part. <clears throat> Thank you. Nobody said it was easy. Uh, you know what Maestro said about you? <laughs> he said that nobody messed up your voice. You came to him when you were young, uh -huh. and he was able to take you know your voice high notes, low notes, and was able to fix you up in a way that now your voice doesn't go anywhere. You go, you, you could do anything that you want with your voice. We, we see it today. Ooh. That was really nice. Meaning so, a lot of singers that come to him, they came with the broken yeah, voice after. And then it, was, it takes it a few years made. first to fix it up, right. and even after he does, it still takes a long time. You know. So the the gilos, a lot of times if you're nervous, then the gilos, you know, you go back to the, to the bad habit. Right, right. Here it's so this song, by the way, it's not, it's not as high. The high part is not as high, it's just very intense. So, so what happens is, because it's so intense, <clears throat> you, you get the sense that, uh oh, I'm never going to be able to reach it. So if you could just forget about the, the, uh, right, the, high, the high notes, and just, it's not a high note, it's just a very intense thing. Just, exactly. You know, you go with it, like he just went with it. Anyway, thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's okay. my pleasure. That was really special. And that's a great song. Yeah, so, so it's a real competition you created here. Abraham well, and Madcha, you gave them each one. Their, and they're both, an a, they're both an A minor, so. Uh. Wow. <laughs> anyway. It's a good song. It's really, both of them are great. So shall we, shall we speed next? it up a little bit? What's that? Shall we speed it up a little bit? Uh, we're, no, good. we're actually enjoying this. Um, guys, you could comment, you could um, do requests, we're going to be looking. You know, what's interesting about this song is that this song is about Moshe Rabbeini. Yeah, yeah. You know that, you know that there's no, there's no, the word Rabbeini does not show up in this lyric. His kapsi, the words come from... Um, from uh, the Hakafis of Simchas Torah, so it's kapsi. It's like it's like somebody's making an announcement in in the heavens, and gathering all the malachim together. Uh, come, you have to see this. There's somebody. Somebody's like just whew, somebody zoomed by, and, and much Rabbeinu came to get the Torah, and of course the malachim, malachim never are never ever able to reach that height where where a neshama could reach, which you know from Chassidus, right? The malachim are in uh, they're in the the the, the matzav of ruach, and anyway. So, um, so they're talking about mi ulu So they, they, they saw somebody just uh, oh, just pass by, by and uh, anyway. So, so it's Moshe, Moshe ulu lamura. So I just when, when I started working with Yiddish Nachas with these kids, there's something beautiful to see a little a little child saying Moshe Rabbeini. Yes. And yeah. anyway, so we'll do the first of two Moshe Rabbeini songs. You like the word Moshe Rabbeini. Oh, I love Moshe Rabbeini. Well, as usual, you also put in Moshe Rabbeini. Oh, yes, true, yes, that's yes. it. Moshe Rabbeini. Yes. But that's you're, still, you're, stealing, you're stealing the what's the name? You're stealing the... Uh, the, the... So. <laughs> We're building up to it. Okay. Anyway. Okay, Dum dum dum, 
on 16th Avenue in Borough Park one Friday and uh, I, tell, I tell the story all the time, I don't care, it's just a great story. This, this old Yid passes me by and he says to me, Diaz gemacht a nigm mit Moshe Rabbeini. I hope everybody understands. There's no subtitles. <laughs> anyway, so, Ich habe so lieb zu hören, kleine jüdische Kinder singen Moshe Rabbeini. I would pay you, he says. If you make a whole album, nor songs for Moshe Rabbeini. Anyway. <laughs> nor McClane Kinder. Like <laughs> so, McClane Kinder, well. So as a matter of fact, so he said, you know what? We could do one more. Happens to be the Sedra this week, so... Oz you shir Moshe Rabbeini Even now you through El Fesru Esashiru Azois Esashiru Azois Esashiru Azois Lashem Oz you shir Moshe Rabbeini Even now you through El Esashiru Azois Esashiru Azois Sashiru Azoi Slashem Se, se, se Nive Yalbahi Se, se, se Kai Nive Yalbahi Eloi Kai, Eloi Kai Yuvi Laharoi Bebedi Se, se, se Kai Nive Yalbahi Se, se, se
First of all, you know, we grew up listening to your compositions. Okay. Um, so we want to know what got you into this? How did you start composing songs? So the truth is that um, we didn't even know it was called composing at that time. Today we have a whole, uh, you know, there were, you know, there were some, some great songs out at the time. Um, of course, uh, Reb Schleimer was, was uh, performing. But uh, we didn't listen so much, so much to Schleimer in the beginning. We didn't really have access to his albums when we were when we were younger. But we did have access to kids' albums. We had London. London we had well. London. We had first of all the 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 first Pirche. That's where it all began, by the way. You know. It was the first album, and the second album was the. Gorgeous songs. Uh, so these were all. So we heard those, and and when an album came out, we, we everybody would run to the store and we would buy the album, you know. So we grew up around those songs, and then came London. Now London was a whole different world because um, London was. I don't know if I dare say it, but it was it was the first kind of post Holocaust expression of Jewish music where people were who, who were who were born after after the Holocaust began to to write on their own and that was Yigal Salak and that whole uh, <laughs> These are not my songs, but these are, these are his. But these are great songs. Oh, these so are incredible how, songs. How is it like you think, okay, I got a spot here and I think I could... No, I didn't. I, 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 did, I didn't. music to the next level. I, I had no spot. So you're asking, uh, uh, that's how, where my first song, how... Yeah. how well, what happened was I, I, lived in, I lived in London. I went to Yeshiva hmm. in London, in Stamford Hill. And uh, I lived by a family, I lived with a, a family of mine. And um, this family was uh, big, they had kind of hard, nine children at the time, nine, nine little children. And I had a room in the attic. <laughs> and in this attic, so I don't know if you've been to London, um, I, have, and I know there's some people from London and Manchester. By the Hi Sam, Sam Solomon, Manchester, I know you're up. I know you're listening. Shout out. It's late, Manchester. but uh, wow, it's late in Manchester now. Anyway. We got so, all night here, Hebron. <laughs> <laughs> so... So, and, and in that, so I used to come home, I don't know if you know, London, to begin with, is not a very, it's not a very, uh, it wasn't a very happy place in, in those days. So you come home from Yeshiva at 8 o'clock, and you kind of went to your room, and, you I know, I didn't... Still, it's still not. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's, 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 much, the weather. it's much better. Look, Shlomi Gertner lives in Stanford Hill now, so there's, oh. there's sunshine. The guys, yeah. there, 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 there is sunshine in London, anyway. And, and um, so I, I used to go up to my room at night, and, uh, and I lived in this attic, which had, it was, like, it was a big room like this. It had lots of boxes and lots of, uh, you know, where they used to put all kind of, it's called flotsam and jetsam. You know, the, you know what these words are? Not really. Oh, no. you didn't hear that? that That's it's, from... it's, it's stuff, you know, that from all the years, it's called, you know, flotsam and jetsam. Anyway, so, and I notice one day I'm sitting, I'm sitting on my bed and I see in the corner, I see like a, like a big, like a big piece of some kind of furniture with boxes on it. And I was curious and I went over and I began to take the boxes off and lo and behold, there's an old piano there. A piano, you know, where each key had, you know, the keys were different levels and some keys were missing and so on, but it was something to do with it. And I, I didn't really know how to play the piano, but I had some kind of a, uh, and, uh, you know, like I had an aptitude for it, and, and uh, I began to, to play with one finger. I played. And then it continued. So, so this was my, my little thing. It wasn't, it wasn't this, it, I wasn't aware even that I was, that I was writing That's a song. A because this song. was like, well, yeah, it, it, this was like a pattern that I kept repeating. That's how things are born. It sounds like.
was like almost like a piano, like a, like a practice. You do a piano, piano mm -hmm. exercise, mm -hmm. piano exercises. And, um, and I was very fortunate to meet Yigal at that, at that time, which is a story in itself. But, um, and he had asked me once, he needed songs, and he said to me, you know how, how nice it would be if you would be writing in and out. I, I loved music. I loved to listen to songs. I was very, but I didn't feel I had a personal connection. And then when he asked me, did you ever try? And, uh, and then I said, well, I have this little ditty that I, that I do. You know, I didn't have words for it or anything. And, I, I, and he heard it and he went crazy. It's like totally up his ass. Oh. It's like just as if he came over to you and asked, could you compose a song for me? That's, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, but that, well, that was obviously when I was coming from that world. I was living in London at the time. Oh, I was listening so to London School of Jewish Songs. I mean, you know. And, and um, he didn't exa exactly know what he says. Could you slow it down? Could you uh, slow it down? What, slow, what, what do you mean slow it down? I, I, you know, he, he, he was kind of, uh, he wanted it to go into a, into a wall. He experience this. But he didn't even know exactly what exa what did he want. He wanted, uh, could you play it differently? Play it? I play piano? I mean, what, you know, the whole, <laughs> anyway. And he, once he heard it, once I was able to slow it down, he ran to the, Svarim Shank, and he took out uh, Breishis, it was the, the Parsha of Aichi at the time, and he says, there's a Rashi over there in Ba'ani, Be'oi Mipad and Aram, that, that, that right, it's Koil Barum and Ishma, and he went ahead and he, he sat with me, and he like, 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 a, like a sergeant until, uh, until I, until, until we hammered, it until out. We hammered <laughs> out the song, and that's, that was the end. Wow. And I had no idea, so what are you going to do with this song now? He says, well, we're going to do a concert. What's a concert? Who knew what a concert was? He says, we go, we travel, we perform for people. People come to see. The only concerts that I saw was weddings. By the way, there's many kids today that's still the only concerts they Probably. see is a wedding. So, and he explained, no, on, there's a stage and we sing for people. And, and uh, anyway, and then I remember I attended in Brooklyn College, not far from here, that Hanukkah. We came back to America. And um, that was the beginning. Wow. And that's, that's, how that, uh, that's how it all started. Wow. Too much information, or that was that's uh, a good song because of that. Avramel came to you, and or that's a separate well, story. yeah, but that's years later. You're talking about this here, and here I'm 19. When Avramel came, was already I was like a good six, six, seven years later. Wow. So you had a many songs, sure, sure, yeah. So Yigal was the first one that you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll sing what happened, to, what, what, whatever happened to where this thing developed. Yeah. 
76. My wife is watching this, and if I'm going to get this wrong, <laughs> okay. 19, I think 1976, 1977, one of those years, you know. Anyway, and um, we got married. We lived in Bar Park for a little while, and then did I know Avram? No, I did not know Avram. I met him in Seagate when we moved to Seagate. We lived there for two years, and one day there was a knock at the door. Oh, I'm telling everybody because it was a real knock at the door. We had no cell phones. So if, if you were going to get, if somebody was going to come to visit you, he wouldn't be able to call you up and say, by the way, can I come over? No, the assumption was you're home. Where, 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 where would you be? Right. And I looked and I opened up the door and there was Shia Mendelowitz with Avram. Shia was a big guy. Avram was a very thin guy. They looked like a um, before and after. Uh, Shia, Shia doesn't mind this, me saying this. That's why he's the one that, I think Daddy is the one who coined that phrase. It looked like a before and, a, before and after uh, shot. And um, they came upstairs, and you know we lived upstairs in the house where we live in right now. We had a tenant downstairs. They came upstairs, and she says to me, "I want to do an album with this guy, and um, we're coming here for songs," which was very straight to the point. Well, straight to the point. And Most now, was, so the that. question: Where did I know Shia from? So Shia, I knew because Shia was in the London. What happened was London School 
In the beginning, they used to bring the kids in, and then it became too expensive to bring 18 kids, 18 tickets from London. So Yigal Salak had a choir in New York, called the New York School of Jewish Song. Wow. With different kids, same Different songs. kids. He trained. Oh, they trained the kids. Yeah, and it was wow. Heshi Leibowitz at the time. He trained the kids, wow. and Yigal performed on stage. People do to make a living. <laughs> Absolutely. And Shia was in the choir. So when I was 18, 19 years old, and I had written Kol Barama, Shia was in the choir at the time. He was a 12, 13 year old, year old at the time. 12 years old he was. And this was like five, six years later. Now Shia is now 18 and he's bringing up Ramel and he's, he's doing, he's doing oh albums. And of course, uh, at that time, I remember I, I sat down with Avramel by the piano and I asked him what he wants to sing about. Give me an idea what it was the first interview that I conducted. Since then I've been conducting. This was, by the way, the interview that began that started it off because... I needed direction when I'm going to write a song. Wh where are you going to go? You know, how do you? What do you want? What do you want? want what's what the it, message? So what he, kind of what's music? the message exactly? So today, it's it's. Then it was a very unique idea. This thing like you singing with a message. You know, people sang with words that, as long as you had um, Yiddish words or Russian words, Russian words and you didn't know what it was. Saying, it was yeah. highly. You know, it was highly yeah, exactly. It was highly it was Kaddish and so on. And, and he said to me, I come. I belong to a family of Chabad Hasidim. Which I had no idea what that meant, by the way. No clue. And now you know what it means? <laughs> no, but I, I, I have a little bit of a look. I found, my way, I found my way over here. <laughs> but, um, and he said to me, and we're, we're Shlichim. He comes from a family of Shlichim. Everybody knows this, this Friedman, this Chashev, a Friedman family. And I know her, I mean, people that are, that are lighting up the world. And um, he was, I think, the youngest. Of the boys, I think. I'm not sure exactly yeah, what yes, the, what's he the other. Is. He still is. Okay. And um, he said to me, We believe that no Jew gets left behind. I had never heard such a such an idea. No Bas leaving behind was if you didn't uh, pass the finals, you got left behind. <laughs> right. No, but he was talking about no no Jew gets left behind. So I remember as a as a as a as a as a uh, just as a not as a, a spoof, I want you mean like no Jew will be left behind. He says, Yeah, 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 that. So I didn't write the I wrote no I, I wrote the word no Jew will be left behind. But of course at that time there was a there was a woman, her name is Penina Claver today. She's the one that wrote that wrote the, that song and the, the one that came afterwards was in Time is now na, 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 here and now Do you know this song? Sure Okay, yeah. good That was the second album and uh, Can I Know Her? It became successful Wow So um, that's when we started writing songs seriously That first album, No Jew broke all kinds of sales records and um, we realized that uh, that Kali Israel was into the message. That's amazing. And you came in a time that it was already... Yeah. There was not much going had, on. I know, but they had great songs. The songs yeah. that they had were great songs. You couldn't just come up with... Uh, right, exactly. You oh, came up with quality songs, songs, songs the message. that actually took off. Yeah, so who was writing songs at the time? Rup Shlomo was writing, uh, uh, still writing at the time. Um, the one who kind of was the Mamala Mukam, the real Mamala Mukam, in my opinion, of Rup Shlomo was Rup Baruch Shait. Right. Who, uh, who wrote me? And of course, he wrote. He wrote a lot of the big songs, and he wrote um, yeah. Yeah. that was. Uh, and Shia was a big fan of of uh, of, uh, of this Baruch Shait. and every song in the beginning. Like I wasn't very interested in writing fast songs at the time. To me, it was all about the message I wrote. You know. So the, the album would begin with a Baruch Shade song and it would proceed to, a, to one of my songs. This is the way we, uh, you know. And um, that's how we started the career. And that's a nice amount of years ago. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, close to 40 years. Anybody is 40 over here? Yeah. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. We're getting, yeah, uh, pretty close. Anyway. Okay, so. let's look. Let's see what people are requesting here. We're, like, we're getting last here. Hope I'm answering the questions. At the yeah, so this was, wow, so No Jew Will Be Left Behind was the first song you composed for Rav Remel? For Remel, yes. Yeah. Hmm. And, and the second one was, remember, if you, let's see if you know the second one. Oh, <laughs> 
today is that um, um, that there is maybe a 15 minute, people have not thought about this, if you want to think about this, there's maybe a 15 minute slot in a wedding where you can even dare to, to sing and to write and to play a new song. Because you have the the chuppas and you have the kates and the ragdim and you have the oidi shamas and you have the right. the songs that everybody expects because they're dancing and they they have dances and they're waiting. Must for have. So the, where is that new song that you put in? So Fifty twenty minutes. I would you say, have 50, yeah. 20 minutes. And everybody. In Crown Heights, we do two hour set dances. You're right. Second, you have all the time in the world. Of, a lot of time. Oh, for no, I'm, yeah, yeah, but there's enough songs to fill up two hours of dances that people songs know. songs that you really have to sing. So, right, like so if you want a new song, a a dance so, yeah. so all the new albums, they're all shooting for those 15 minutes. You know, I, you gonna throw I, I, I walked away from those 15 minutes. I said, well, what, 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 this, this, the chup is so long, and Shabbos is so long, and Yantav is so long, and davening is right. long. Oh, so yeah, you so need songs for those. More, more so than that. So every once in a while, uh, one, you know, one got in. You like know. a skapti falls in. You know, <laughs> to, to fill in the 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You need 50 minutes just for that song, actually. Yes. <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, another question is here. Um, how, how did Tanya come about? So Tanya was already, was already, um, after Meshoy Chazdra was where that's where it was the, the parashas, the rochim, the the, uh, the, fork. the fork in the road. What does Yogi Berra say? If you come to, to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was the fork in the road that, mm -hmm. that we took. And Avremel, we, we took it together. And um, because till that time, um, Jewish music was really... There were two part songs. There was you had a low part, you had a high part, and then they were they were great, you know. Like when Rachem Chazdech Ve'Endovid Avdech O Yovoi, right? It's beautiful. But to take a song and to take to take a and have all kinds of chazanas uh, and slow and fast and in, in three and in four and to go back and different parts. Because we began to look at lyrics. Yitzirat. Like Yitzirat, right. And we began to look at lyrics, and um, the lyrics had to be interpreted. So all of a sudden, we, began, we got older, and we, we, we began to understand. And so I began to write songs that reflected the lyric. And that's at that point. And that was a big uh, problem, because certain people did not want him to go in that direction. They were afraid that people would get bored from this kind of stuff that they yeah, wanted the... Yeah, without names, who was it? No, 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 no. I'm saying other people that were in the, oh, in the industry okay. were advising him, no, but that's not, that's not going to be good for you. you like and stay the, as a pop singer. And, and, yeah, and, okay. he, right, and he said no, and we, we moved along. So, so, so the first song was Moshe Chazor. You know Moshe Chazor. Sure. I'm not going to do that now. You know Moshe Chazor? Really? Can we do a little Meshach Hazdor? Of course. Well, hold yeah. on a second. But this What's one, the question? We got the right yeah. artist. We got to so. find the key for Meshach Hazdor because that is, if you don't start in the right place, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> you can wind up in like... Found yourself on Mount Everest. So, it's actually a song with a huge range. Um, that's why, that's it, why you have to be careful. No, mm. definitely not there. You don't want to be there. Let's see.
Actually, after after um, after Reb Dubov, after Reb Yitzchak Dubov, it's a chronicle of Rocha. Okay, so are we uh, ready for more questions? Yeah. Um, so this Can't song actually has, time, has a on. huge. First, first of all, we, we forgot about Tanya. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, but, because you because you asked what was the first. How did we get to Tanya? You okay. can't. So this is how you we can't got get to, to Tanya before you pass from Shoyf. <laughs> this is how we got to Tanya. Now, Tanya. <laughs> anyway, no, actually, Mishoy was the was the first one, and then you know. Amazing. Yeah, Tanya came later. Tanya was already in the, on the We Are Ready album. That was already. Uh, did you ever compose a song with us with an easier range than uh, than this? Shepa? Well, it, what's the smallest the smallest range? Oh, the smallest say? range. Ah, that's your question. Yeah. So, so in the beginning, obviously, Avram had the Leon Hara, this huge voice, this huge range, and he had all these different emotions that he that he wanted to express and so on. So. And one of the problems that resu has resulted for me was that um, people would try to sing the songs that I wrote, and of course, if it wasn't of Ramon, they would have they would have problems. They would say, "Why can't you just write a song like Kalbach?" <laughs> Gorgeous, all the emotions. It's all there, right? And, and, but these songs would. Would I probably would say, well, what does that do for my my? There's not anything for me, really. I mean, that's a he has to shine. He it's has a beautiful crowd his song. His no, 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 no. I, no it's not the only division. It's it's These songs were crowd songs. Songs for ah, people to sing together. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, you mean, I not everybody has a voice like you. Right, exactly. It's got a, you know, each group's yeah. cast. So, 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 so I was writing for solos. I was writing for solos. What? Like this song, you can't sing it on the Shabbos table. Well, yeah, you know, he could. He, the, he, he could sing it on the Shabbos table. So, <laughs> you could also, actually. Well, I sing it every week in my Shabbos table. Oh, really? Shoif? Uh, Bamas, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm too anyway. tired for that. So, so um, every once in a while, and, but this only happened later, I didn't realize what was going on. I was writing for people that were solo, solo singers. And every solo singer wanted a song that could show off what he can so do. Then, so that was important for the, for him, you know. And um, it was only later that I was working with with uh, with Matcha already, and I'm jumping because it, you notice Matcha is not even in this conversation yet, though I knew him when I was a little kid. I knew Matcha when I was a little child, and we were good friends. And he lived a few houses away from me. While all this was going on, he lived four or five houses away from and he me. Never he came still to you does. And asked you why don't you compose a song? No, for no, we never did. No. And we, we were starting to talk Who before. Who composed songs for, for him? For he did. He himself. did. He was he's a great composer. He, he still wow. is a great composer. I mean, you know, Who do you think wrote that? He'd rather pray and sing. I mean, he was, he was a great he's a great writer. He wow. Part of his, his career in the beginning, the way he developed was that he was writing songs and singing songs. It wasn't that you went someplace else and you got a song from somebody to sing. There was something... Not organic about that, by the way. And that's the way it was. People don't under, don't understand that. I mean, and he wrote and and he experimented like he had. So he had all these songs. Do you know the song? Yeah. Oh, no, so no so he was able to. He experimented. He did his own thing. He experimented, and everybody loved. Well, you know, you went out, the new al when he put out a new album, everybody ran to buy the album. And you, you struggled to learn and to understand what did he write? What was the composition about? It's not like you came 
with an expectation. Well, let me see if it fits into what I consider is a, is a what's name is a, uh, yeah. you know, it's very interesting. All of that stuff changed later. So there wasn't a lot of stuff then either. What? You know, people. Well, there was uh, there was a good. He put out an album once every eighteen months, let's say. That took I know, two but years. every album that he that he put out or that Abramo put out, you, you know, years ago, it's, it was anticipated. It was right, beca right because, because but they, they were allowing they were allowing uh, the singer to set the pace and to tell the story. Now, instead of the the audience saying, "Well, I, I would like like this. I'd like a couple of pounds of uh, hora. I wanted some disco. Mm -hmm. I want a, I want a, you know, like uh, yes. give me a couple of ounces." And they're like, you know, and you know, people decide what they want, Order. Yeah. which is fine. You know, time changes. Anyway, so um, your question was, oh, <laughs> well, that song, yeah, the song, the, the, right. The song. So, so this one's for Matra, actually. This one was Matra, right. So we, we talk about a song that has a very short. Uh, let me give you an example. And of it was made like Khilla to be like that? that yeah, he yeah. To it was meant like Khilla to be like that because at the time, I remember he had some issues with his voice mm -hmm. and um, he had a good octave at the time. And um, you know, today his voice, Bilei Ein Hara, he sounds better than he ever did, by the way. Today he's just comfortable and he's this... You, know, you, can put, you can put your head down on that voice and listen to it. It's so you stunning. actually had to cater and, and, and tailor a song. With, with emotion. You know, you had to get wow. the right emotion. So Let, I'll tell you, let's hear the song. Yeah. The song before the story or the story before the song? Uh, the story before the You have to understand how this emotion happened. So okay, so we, I, did, I did an album with Avram at the time and it was called um, uh, On Giant's Shoulders. A song. The name, there was a song on Giant's Shoulders and the idea was, this is Avram's idea. I think Avramel may have even written the lyric to this song. And um, it was about this, this giant who uh, has this dream to take his little child to see, to see the palace of the king. And um, he, he, one day he sets out, he takes his little child, and they walk and walk and walk, and they get to this place, and they see, <clears throat> the giant can see already the, the palace, but he gets to the, to, the, to, to, the, the uh, to the wall, and he sees that he can't, even the giant, the wall is higher than the giant himself. And how's his little kid going to see going to see the king? So he, without an, any braver, he takes the child and he says, "Look, I can't. I'm going to put you on my shoulders, and you'll see the it's palace of the king. And I'll, you'll Who's tell me. Idea? This the, is Avram. Avram. Giant, Abramel. giant, giant idea. Beautiful idea. It's very touching. And and the and the mush, the nimshal was that that you know you have all these." Tzaddikim that lived through Before thousands us. of years and they yes. were not Zoyche to see Mashiach. And we're going to be Zoyche to see Mashiach. It was a kind of a question. Why? If, if, if Mashiach didn't come for, for Kiva Eger, he didn't come for the Balatanya, he didn't come, why is he going to come for us? You know, that was the, uh, and the idea was that the giants, they did all the work and we just have to give that last little, push. That last push. So one day I'm saying Tilim and I, I see this incredible thing. I see David HaMelech in Tilim who is the father of Mashiach Ben David, so to speak, and he writes about the, the, exactly this message in Tilim thousands of years ago, that there may be a possibility that Tal Yisrael will only be Zoycha to see Mashiach only at the end of time when there won't be any giants left. And and um, the words were Ki Elohim Yoshiat Zion, Liyivna Orei Yehuda, Vezera Avada Vinchalu, the children of the of his of his servants. So what Zera Avadov? What's Zera Avadov? You know, he's Avadov, right? Unbelievable. So I said, look, right in here is the, uh, is the message. So I'll start it and... Uh,
Parsha per se, but it's from the from the mass of the Mitzrayim, with Paroi, with the whole thing. It's called Pen Pen. That was actually Abraham's lyric. It was Abraham's idea. Abraham's idea. The idea of Pen Pen, uh, Ken Ken. You know what Mitzrayim is? Pen Yirbe, and and Hashem said yes, we'll do. Abraham's idea to come to compose it for you. For you? No, Abraham came to him. But with the idea, the time, the idea, that time, and um, it didn't work out for with Abraham all the time. But I wrote it for him. Great. Let's hear it. Out the moimu pen. So you know it's a parry, parry the story with it. Right. Right? It's ba- because um what, how was it Cain Cain Pen Yifroids? Parry said Pen right. and we said Cain Yirbu. So there's, so there's this uh Atom Oimrim Pen, Vani Oimer Ken. So this argument between Cloudy so Stroll and 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 uh, and Paray. Okay. Yes. We had fun making the song yeah. and talking about it. Out of my pen, down in your pen, out of pen, down in pen, out of my pen, down in your pen, out of pen, down in Ich bin so fein mit euch, ich bin so fein mit euch. 
feel it right here. I don't know about so, Tebre. One of your comments. You know, these singers, they don't stop uh, coming Matsu Shabbos. They give up from the time, including Yossi Green. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you're making a wedding coming up, this is definitely a singer to, uh, to get. You know, some singers, they start off the evening and then from then on, you know, if it's a good singer with a good technique, it actually it gets, gets better and better and better as the night, as the evening goes on. You know, on. one of his... Uh, when I got to know him in the beginning, one of the things that, that, that um, he had that very few people had, he had he was in perfect pitch all the time. Pitch that he, whether it's his ears, whether whatever, he is, he's incredible pitch. He's on, you see, pitch is, is um, pitch means to be on the note, to be right in tune. Tune by the, you could be slightly off tune, not badly off tune, you could be slightly off tune, and that, and that most people wouldn't tell, can't tell the difference, but musicians can, and musicians loved to perform with him because he was always. It's interesting, you know. We we it, talked about it last comments. I told him that. Yeah. Big Kiddush. It's a big Kiddush. Not everybody is uh, is in tune, so you don't have to be flat. We we th we think that uh, well, he also, sings flat. Right. We're not talking about flat. We're talking a about slightly percent, off. That that yeah. percentage. Most most people don't really. Uh, you know. You don't hear it, right? Yeah, you'll be on the one time. It's. Um, it's a matona for It's a gift, yeah. He yeah, has this, he's the gift of, of being in pitch. Okay. And let's, he, see what, let's see what else we got. We're getting carried away here. Oh my gosh, it's a huge list. Anovim, Daiki Minayim. Anovim. I also had a lot of requests for Anovim. Anovim. What's the story with Anovim, Taka? What's the... Are you asking? Or are you like... 
I know him. Tried to give no him. conversation. <laughs> well, it, it started off. It was somebody had a a, um, a wine a wine press, and it was Anuvim Anuvim Higiyazman. You know, it, was, it took a long time for the for the grapes to ripen that year. And um, people, it, 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 it was now running. Anuvim Anuvim Higi. He's trying to press the uh, grapes in order to make wine out of it. And uh, anyway. But how did you make I the hope song? You, I hope every you don't believe me. Every song has a story. <laughs> every song has a story. Yeah. So, the, the people, well, the beauty of Anovim was not so much the song or the writing. The beauty of it was that people connected to it. That people really connected to the message, and um, this idea of Mashiach standing on the roof, you know, the Havdel fiddler on the roof, you know, Mashiach on the roof. People were, were well, only at the time. The idea that that um, that Mashiach is standing on the top of the Beis Hamikdash, the new Beis Hamikdash, and he's still pleading with Klal Yisrael to believe him that he's here. Wow. You know, he, aminim. He's giving, he's giving, he's giving haychokas. He's giving proof that he's here, which kind of, for me was very powerful because, you know, we grew up in a in a post Holocaust um, time. It's very hard for people to understand what that means. When we went, when I when I was a little kid, I went to shul with my father, and the people took off their their sleeves in order to put on film. Everybody had a number. Everybody had a number tattooed on their arm. At the time, so Klalisol was, was was coming off the, one of the worst times in history, and these were Tzibrach and Yidin that were making a go of it again and putting on film again and raising Jewish families again. And right, you know, yes. it, was, it was a very big. I remember there was an old Yid, and I walked over and I asked him, "What's the number? What is that number?" So he told me that he looks at me and he smiles and he says, "When I was a little kid, I couldn't remember my phone number." And as many times as I tried, I couldn't, so my mother wrote it for me on my, on my arm so that I shouldn't forget. Wow. What was he going to tell the kid, you know? So, so, and as I got older, the Mashiach, all, as matter all of our songs, really, the first thing the song I wrote was called A Letter to Mashiach, which was on Mayor Sherman's album, before I remember. And then No Jew Will Be Left Behind, and then Goodbye Gullis, and then um, Hold Down Just a Little Bit. Tell you. Yeah, and, and, uh, goodbye Gullis, and then... Um, wow. Hold on just a little bit longer, and 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 um, everything was was about this, you know, and it kind of got, you know. Of course, the Rebbe was about, talking about this every, everywhere, you know, and and after after a while, I began to see that the message was not was not as strong as it used to be, and um, and I was very disturbed by it, you know, because it was, you know, you know, Mashiach is is Klali Stroll's exit plan, you know. Every people have a business. This is not. Strategy. There's an exit strategy. Where do we go it's from not here? Just a, Where do we go? We're not doing is, is in And I, I once I remember I asked the, I asked the kid, a successful kid, and I, he's like a young man, and I said to him, "So what's what are you looking forward to?" When you asked us, we 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 were afraid to make a plan on Hanukkah. What we're going to what, what we're going to wear Purim? So the boys got together in the back as well. If Mashiach doesn't come before Purim, yes. I'd like to be a lion. I'd like to be a soldier. You know that was the. But we were busy with that. I, mean, I even remember even further, which was even strange, like before Pesach, we would make plans where we're going to go to camp together. And then we'd say, Mashiach doesn't come. And we were hoping, please, maybe Mashiach, if, he if he's going to come, if he yeah. can come after camp. Because <laughs> camp, you know, we, we were looking forward to camp. And the, you, know, you know this, this thing, this joke, it's not a saying that a chusen under the chippa could ask for whatever he wants. Poil and shears. There's, no, why doesn't anybody ask Mashiach to come? There's, they all say, okay, after my chasen, after Shevrotis, <laughs> you know? And he, right. He's afraid, these guys were afraid that, yeah, he was so afraid, this chasen was afraid that he's got such koyach under the chuppah, you know, not, anyway. So, and, and, I, and I saw the message get shwacher, you know, and of course I wrote that song, Hesach Hadas, Hesach Hadas, Hesach Hadas, right? So, what was the concept of Hesach Hadas? We could never understand. How, how could you be a Mashiach Das or Mashiach? So that really was our, is my lyric. How is it possible for somebody to be a Mashiach Das? Yeah. Right? Anyway, so, and I began to realize that, that Hesach Das doesn't mean that people, they just, 
not busy with it anymore, you know. So when I saw this, this, um, um, love him, that, that, if you may not turn on me, in Ruba Oiri, she's a reach. So that was the reason why. And I saw that people, people got the message. People got the message. <laughs>
la fase policía. No, but right, but the ones that are, I'm, I'm, I was saying the second one was the car. Oh, sure. Oh, the latest oh, one oh. is um, we discussed the possibility of doing a new song. If you want to hear the new, the new Yiddish Nachas, I'm working on the new Yiddish Nachas. That's Yiddish Nachas Volume Four. Really, I know it was like uh, this is one of the most precious, precious projects 
that I'm involved with in the last four or five years, but Hashem, we're up to we're on to our fourth album. And um, in each, the first, the first one had Ato Kodosh. Ato Kodosh, Veshim Kodosh. Ato Chayne, the second one, Ato Chayne. Hey, Ato Chayne, the Yodon Das. The third one had Slach Slach Lodi. Because I didn't really have the message of Reino Vanyeno. I didn't really get the message very clear because, because it says that the first few Brochas of Shmanesra are personal requests. And by Tka Shoifer, they begin the, the requests of the Klal. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't understand what's Reino Vanyeno, what's it doing. Personal. It's about Gula. So it's not my question. The Gemara asked this question and so on. But I couldn't really connect <coughs> until I finally understood that. It, about it's a gula, it talks about a Gula Nafshis. That we, we are, we, we need our own redemption. Nothing to do with the of Skava Schäufer, but this is, you know. <laughs> Hey! 
Daddy really was another approach to Rucham. He was another uh, fork in the road, completely went, went. And he, you see that he liked songs like these, but he wanted they should still be pop. They should still have a certain, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I wrote so I I the Zakoi says his royal road, so I could have worked for a while. The Zakoi says his royal road, so I could have worked for a while. The Zakoi says his royal road, so I could have worked for a while. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> you can. Um, That's okay. the one of the old, the old you series that you did. The you old did one. To know him. You, you really, yeah. yeah. You think what do you think? The, you think the the out there is. Uh, yeah, they want to know what, what, what inspired all of a sudden to do a song like uh, you know Shtart Noim. Yeah, Shtart Noim. Well, Shtart Noim was. Also, um, could be Rabin. These are messages that are like. <sighs> oh yeah. They came from left, not left to Chas Shalom. You know, but but it's, it's just it's amazing that everybody's thinking about Mashiach, but each time you had a great, a great way to present it. Yeah, that was uh, well F minor, believe it or not, Shtart Noim. So. So what question? Which which which, which do which do we want to tackle? Start nine or you can grab it. Start nine, you know, well, she has man. Start nine, okay. So start nine. At the time, I um, start nine actually is a satner construction, believe it or not, because it was very interesting. Very few people knew that start nine existed outside of satner at the time, because um, we knew it because in the second day of Shavuos, uh, between between Mincha. And a, and a kafis, mm -hmm. right? If, if uh, you don't, you don't. I'm not sure that you're that you're familiar with this. The second day of a kafis between what am I? Uh, what am I talking about? Kafis shvuas. The second day of shvuas. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm trying to say like, what is he talking about? But yeah, it's all running together yeah. now. Um, so second day of shvuas, a kafis. Chalamoy shvuas. So chalamoy shvuas. Yeah, that it should have been a chalamoy shvuas. Anyways, so so. Second day of shvuas. They used to say. The start in Satma, they said start nine. There was this a long piece. It's a long mm -hmm. piece. There's the Ksuba, there's the time and the Ksuba that was written by Rabbi Srol Najara, who was one of the, he's the Mechaber of Kori Ben Olam. Have you know Kori Ben? Okay. That's right. So that, that poem. We're going to get to that soon. <laughs> okay. So he wrote that lyric, and, and um, he also wrote a whole beautiful piece of a, the contract, the Ksuba contract between, between the Rabbi Shloylem and Klal Yisrael. The Tanoim contract, and we grew up. We knew it was a long. We had to wait. The Rebbe used to say it, and all the Chassidim. Yeah, it was a whole tissue. The whole, whole that sure. the, the, they said this. So nobody. You at home, I'm sorry. The, the, yes, yeah, so no, yeah, nobody knew. Nobody knew about this. Shad Noim. So uh, mm -hmm. I remember showing it to Avraham. He says, "Really? Where? Who?" So I showed him at the time that this is Rishon Lejara. It's a Talmud of Dari, Darizal. Anyway, the problem with Shad Noim was that it's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't and you, you can't. So the bunch was Chayin and Das, and we came up with this. Beautiful, cute little idea called v'chulu. V'chulu, v'chulu. So this, wait a second. Once you add v'chulu, v'chulu, then I can choose. Then I, I'm not so sure it's a chabat the v'chulu. He didn't come up. So Avremo wasn't the one that. No, 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 no. This is no. This Avremo wasn't there at the time. Whose idea was it to put v'chulu in this? Me. Because I mean, I had no choice. How else were you going to write a song that takes two weeks to sing? You know. So we have time. As it is. It's interesting. I wrote a song for. I mean, I wrote a song for a Dudu Fisher called Be'an the Rockets. So at the time, uh, I think, who was the, um, Nachum Siegel was on the radio at the time. And whenever I used to go to, to do an interview, he says, you know what I love about your songs? Your songs give me an opportunity. I can go out and grab a sandwich. He says, I'm here from 6 o'clock <laughs> till 9 o'clock. Sometimes I get, I get in Mamish at the, the, the right time and I don't have a chance to eat. And you know, and all these songs are two, three minute songs. You do songs, you, know, you can do a song like, you do a song like Start Noim, I can go out and get it. So when I wrote Be'an Rochitz, it was an eight minute song that you can go out and take a shower. But of course, Be'an Rochitz in Aramaic does not mean a shower, I hope. Uh, hope. Anyway, mm, I couldn't resist the, uh, the Our joke. Our producers are going to come back to after the shower. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to go take a break now. So Start Noim. We need you for this one. This is <clears throat> oh. So Start Noim was basically, I had the opportunity to take out the things that were pieces that, that were very poignant right. and instead of continuing the rest the mm -hmm. so there's an intro there's an introduction and also this is also very different it's here than everything because you had like an, like kind of you introducing the piece and then you had this the valley of Rihu, right and then you set aside the, the, two, the two sides, the chas and the kala, they each say, and then of course you have to eventually get to a dance, yes, dance number. And, uh, good, uh, right, uh, and I thought at the time that uh, Ramel would definitely nix this one because it was going to be too long. And as it is, there were people saying who, th at the time that some of these songs are just very, very long, and Ramel said, what are you talking about? Let's just do it. So, um... <laughs> 
Le Mazel Tov. Who'd believe that would be here 20 years later and sing this in, uh, in YouTube or whatever? Hamagid Bereishi Sacharis.
Mazel Tov. We never get enough of that one. What? How did the next one? Who's the one that came up with this one? That's a good question. So Yuchid Rabim, actually, there was a piece that Avremel found a little vertel from Rameir Shapiro, the one who, who, who um, the initiator of the Dafa Yomi. And it was it was a, a medrash pelia on this um, on this uh, that the poyrish me mechaveira al al yifrash eli bidvar abtoch dvar alocha and and so the medrash says which alocha alocha of yuchid v'rab alocha k'rabim and he explains why it's, you know and so on so it's a little a little piece it was a sefer iturei Torah, I remember like it was a, like like mionish of Torah it's like the Torah is on the week and um, when I saw, the, I saw this story, we wrote that whole, uh, you know, we, we created that whole story. That's, that's not written anywhere. I mean, in, of course, it's, it's, there's the, the Shu alive, Ashiv Aleichem, and Ashiv Ashivain about the, the Yiddish story we wrote together. And um, that, was the, uh, that was the story of Yuchad Rabbim. Of course, uh, by Yuchad Rabbim, I thought. I didn't think that it would become as popular as it did at the time because um, that was already, we were stretching it already, like, you know, but people love it. What does that mean, stretching it? And here you have a story of, of, of um, you know, with it's Yiddish. And it's, 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 it's long and it's, um, you know, it's... He never did it at a concert, did he? Uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember. I don't remember it uh, at a concert, but... Um, See, to say that, that took some courage at the time. The beautiful thing about about writing a song for somebody who who is a good singer is something called value added. You give him a song, and then when you do the arrangement, you come to you come to the studio and you hear him sing it, and he gives it back to you ten, fifteen percent more than what you gave him. And then you give him back the harmonies, ten percent more than that, and you know you feed off each other, and that's like uh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So, let's do another one. He told me that he's a coin and he wanted a, he wanted a uh, brocha benching the kids.
that's life, Chavrin. <laughs> You had a song with, with, which had this range, like, uh, you know, and every time people got to that part, all of a sudden, that, had that look of panic on their face. <laughs> Is that what happened to you? Is that why you fell out? Or no, because... no, I'm not 100% of this song. I, I know most of it. <laughs> anyway, hey. You also wrote another Kayo. I wrote two, 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 more, two more Kayos. Two more. Two more. So the second one was for Tzlilva Zemmer. Which yeah. actually came from Crown Heights. This is a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah, we didn't sure. touch still with them yet tonight. Well, you didn't we ask. have to come back another week, I think. You didn't no, ask. No, we have you guys. It's not, Kevin, it wasn't easy bringing you still over here, let me tell you. You guys are not leaving so quickly. <laughs> I used that shtick over second one, this is the third one. This is the one I wrote for Avramo. The second one, I started talking about the one I wrote for Silver Zemmer. Ah, I was wondering about Yeah, right? Ah. <laughs> Some people have a great voice when they're younger, and then when they're older, they're... And he sounded so amazing. Yeah. I like, like my hands are shaking on the keyboard. Wow. <laughs> it was really, really okay. nice. Okay. Um, one more. Um, 
didn't want to say, oh yeah, how did you meet uh, Abraham Rosenberg? Well, the same way, the same way I met, but once, once... He came to you, he banged on Yeah, the, yeah they, banged, WhatsApp. they banged on the... What? WhatsApp. <laughs> There's no WhatsApp. Anyway. No, are you kidding? So the, the, in those days, that's the way, you know, they got a phone call, can I come over? And he came over and he told me he's doing a choir and uh, I said, a choir? Another? Because that time... You're already doing it for Igor Salak? New York School, we had Igor Salak, we had Sho, Peter Shalim, a lot, a lot of uh, choirs were around those days. Anyway. I see that we're getting. Uh... Yeah. Wow. We, I'm, I'm still. I'm just getting started here. <laughs> <laughs> what are we being? What are they, were they shutting the lights on us? No. no. Mm. What other songs did you do for Silver Summer? Mm. Um, okay. I just. I have to check the key to make sure. I want to get stuck here, and then the only one who's going to be able to sing is going to be uh, y y Yumi over here. Yeah, but he's doing a great job. I'm sure he's doing a great job, but he wants to rest every once in a while. Ah, I got it. It's a great one. Daddy redid this one. We also never checked as kids, uh, you know, who's the composer. Later, later you know, Rebecca Batzlocha and this, we all knew that it's your songs. Yeah, but well, sure. in the beginning, we, at least for myself. But that's why we did Shades of Green. Uh, the purpose right, of Shades right. of Green. All these songs are paired on Shades of Green. So on Shades of Green, yeah. we had the opportunity to redo them in the way we wanted them to be done and so on.
many questions? songs? How many, many songs? Yes, people want to know how many songs you're, you composed. <coughs> how many songs? Um, I always say... In, in well, he's got to know exactly. It's like I'm, you ask somebody I'm, how many kids you have. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, so the edit, got, I have the edit. the book, hello. <laughs> The answer to that question is I'm really only interested in the songs that I did not write yet. How many songs I did not write? How many I wrote is not relevant. It's, you know, you know Roch is not Chal only in something that's, that's some, some of an eye that's not. I know, but uh, there's, each one has a story with it. And each yeah, one has, it's, it's, it's different singers, time. different stages of life, different, you know. And the stage that we're doing now with, with the kids is just beyond, beyond. The uh, Beli and Hara. This, the, we already have our clients who are buying this th this third album were kids that sang on the first album. So, yeah. true. Which, which is the way. Them, yeah. Which is in those days the way we built an audience was we wrote songs for kids, and then we got a little older, and then we wrote songs for young for for for, for, for Bacharim, and then for Yim Delight, and then slowly, slowly, and then now we kind of got to that peak. Like for instance, for a young child. To try to understand Avramel singing at this point is it's not so it's not so simple because he can I know after all these years the his ability to sing and to interpret music I mean how do you explain that to an eight year old but you want eight year olds to listen to Jewish music as well so yes. we're starting from this from this end again hopefully to bring the audience back up again and Baruch Hashem it was an experiment that we tried with the first album and it was successful and uh, just don't forget each each few you have to put in another make sure buy me oh yeah <laughs> so this one we want um, what, what was the uh, if you want to, I give you, I give you this an idea. That's saying, but he didn't do Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, the Atins Gezog. There you go. Put that in. What do you mean? I put that in. That was definitely. That, that was the first. I don't think he did Rabbeinu. I always do. Oh, oh, I always oh, did. Oh, 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 <laughs> uh, we have to first of all thank the websites because uh, you know we're having such a great time. We're forgetting. Silwell Live, Gruntig, and what's nice, Matzv.com, The Lakewood Scoop, Gula.fm, Kikara Shabbat. Shiazali, wow. and um, yeah, everybody on Instagram, um, Chassid Shahak, Simcha Spat, there's a lot of names here, and uh, Kol Chai, they also called me just this past week. And last but not least, really? Flow Motion Studios. Woo! Um, we thank them so much because they took a huge headache off of my back and off of my head, wow. off of everywhere because... This is a magnificent studio, yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they take care of all the tech, and... Um, if you could see what I'm looking, I'm looking at. <laughs> you guys can't see it's that, amazing. but I'm looking at cameras and screens so, yeah. and lights. Thank you, Tanavon. Thank you so much, Ben. Baruch yeah. Atorenheim. You guys are just amazing. You guys did a great, great job. Um, we have time for one more song. One more song. But we got like hundreds of songs to choose from. It's not an easy task. <laughs> Shabbati is the feeling of Oh, you're oh, you is the feeling Oh, 
This is my favorite song, by the way, by Weddings. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. Wow, okay. It's also because it's been... No, the last part was written by, uh, what's his name? Yerushalayim. It was written by the deed from London, no? Um, no, what's his name? I have a shot of in this song, by the way. Oh, wow. You didn't know this? No, I didn't know. Levi, we got to get... Could you do me a favor? Ask, ask, uh, ask, ask quickly what's the name of him. I don't want to... Uh, I want to give him credit. No.